So it's time to get the video into the last page of our document. And uh, we are going to do this exactly the same way as we get in pictures and type by using the place command. Now there is something you should know. There's been a change in InDesign in the last version. And uh, so we can't do everything to the video in InDesign. We have to do part of it here, and then we're going to have to open up our exported PDF in Adobe Acrobat to do the second part. So it's all very simple, just takes two programs instead of one, and this video is going to show you how to do it. Won't take long. Thank God! So I'm going to go up to the File menu, pull down to Place, or Command or Control D, and uh, just navigate to my video. You'll notice it's reduced size. There's another video to show you how to export your movie from Premiere Pro at a smaller size, which you must do. Otherwise, your PDF will end up being stupid large. Yeah. So I'm going to open this. And then you'll notice I have some guidelines in here already. So I'm just going to click and drop that in. And that is pretty much all there is to it. And uh, we are almost done in InDesign, if you can believe it. No but way. I don't really like this first frame of the video because it's just black. So that doesn't really tell the viewer anything of what to expect if they click to play this. So I want to change what's called the poster image. And to do that, I need to open up the media window. The media window is located in the window menu. Um, as all windows are, and it is underneath the interactive uh, tab. And so I'm going to pull down to media, and voila, uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this bad boy into the dock, and uh, it will be there for the next time I want to do this. So as I mentioned, InDesign made some changes. They stopped supporting Flash, and what that means is we can't dictate what type of video skins we have. In other words, the play controls and stuff. All we can do is really put in the video, and uh, we can tell it when to play. And we can change the poster image. So that's all we're going to do in here. We'll change when this plays um, in Adobe Acrobat. And so I'm just going to scroll over till I find an image that I would like. And the poster image, very simply, is just the image that shows until the video is played. And so I'm going to choose that. That gives a good synopsis of what this video is about. And now I all I need to do is click on this little refresh symbol. And that is now loaded as my poster image for my video. So great, I'm actually done here in InDesign. All I have to do is export this as an interactive PDF. So back up to the file menu, pull down to export. And I just need to give this a name. That's absolutely fine. And here's the important part. Make sure the format is set to PDF Interactive. And again, there's a whole movie on exporting, so I won't belabor it here. Hallelujah. Make sure you know where you're putting it. Click Save. When you get to this, it depends what format the brochure is that we're creating in this class. If you have side-by-side -side pages, you would need to check this to allow the spreads to show. If, as in this example, it's just a collection of single pages, then just leave pages marked. Um, you want all of them. And then viewing. Uh, this is what's going to happen to the PDF when the viewer opens it. So the view will be 100%. The layout will be single page. These are changeable. Uh, down here, what's really important is you want to make sure that forms and media include all. Otherwise, all the interactivity you put into this may not be included. So I'm going to export. When this little window comes up, no worries. Uh, it is just saying it's going to change the color space to be RGB instead of CMYK because it is meant for screen viewing. All right, so this is exporting. Uh, when I come back, we will be inside Acrobat and we will insert our video skins. So here we are in Adobe Acrobat now. I have opened up that interactive PDF that we just exported from InDesign. So I am going to click through till I get to the 
video page, which is the very last one. And you'll notice that when I roll over this, it says click to activate. So I'm going to do that. Now you'll notice it hasn't played and this annoying yellow bar shows up at the top saying that certain features have been disabled. So I don't want those features disabled. I want my video to play. So I'm going to go to options here and I'm going to say trust this document always. And then when I click in here, the video will start to play. Like, oh my God. Okay, so great. So what's the problem? Why do I need to do anything here in Acrobat? Everything's working great, right? Well, I would like to stop this video. I would really like to stop this video because this is bugging me. Who is this old guy and why is he talking so much? Well, I'll just get off the page. Uh, nope, doesn't work. At this point, I'm ready to throw my computer, so I'm just going to close down the file. And that is why you need a video skin on your video. You want to give the viewer the ability, obviously, to stop and start the video when they want to play it. So that's the feature that was lost in InDesign recently and why we have to add it here in Acrobat. So what I'm going to do is reopen that file and show you how to add a video skin. All right, so here we are back in the file. This time I am not going to click on this because I don't want to go through that horrible experience again. What I'd like to do is get into an editing mode uh, that will allow me to control what happens with the video. So for that, I need to go up to the Tools tab up here, click on that, and I want to click on this little rich media icon. So the file reopens, and now I have the ability to right-click on this, and then I can choose from this little tiny menu that drops, Properties. And just a couple of things to set in here. So on this first screen, Launch Settings, Enable When, so you have a choice when the a content is clicked, so in other words, the video is clicked on, or you can say when the page containing the content is opened, or even when that page is just visible. So I'm going to do it when the page is opened, knowing that the viewer can stop it if they want to. And then down here, playback style. Do you want to play the content on the page, or do you want it to play in a floating window? I wouldn't recommend doing in a floating window unless you really want people to be able to see the video larger, which means that your PDF would have to be very large in, in size. So I wouldn't do that. I'd keep your video small and just have it play the content on the page. And then one more thing, I got to go to the controls tab here. And uh, very simply where it says skin, right now it is set to none. I'm going to choose all controls, and that really is the only choice you have. Everything else is disabled. I can then click OK. I can then go up here to the close button in the upper right. That will take me out of this rich media editing view. And uh, then I want to get away from this page and come back to it, and that will force the video to load. So I'm just going to go back here, click on my little icon here, Voila. So now, if this old man starts to annoy me, I can pause him, I can change the page, I can come back to the page, and I can continue playing. And that is it. That is all there is to it. So it is required that you add this video skin to your videos so that your teacher will not go insane and not be able to stop your video. Unless that's your goal, of course, then don't do it. But your grade may suffer. You just don't know.